SpaceX has shocked the entire rocket industry with everything at Starbase, from the rapid pace of building, testing, fixing, upgrading, and expanding. And while everyone's glued awaiting Starship 25 Booster 9 and the FAA's response, does anyone take notice? Right in the heart of NASA, SpaceX is also creating something so terrible that it overwhelms all competitors. Even NASA is mind-blowing. Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Starbase is the world's first true spaceport located in South Texas. It's home to SpaceX's next-generation Starship rocket factory and launch pads and is known as the gateway to Mars among the space community. This location will serve as the launch site for dozens, if not hundreds, of Starship flights every month. The scale of the facility at Starbase is unparalleled, exceeding the capabilities of any other rocket company. Even NASA, the largest government-run space agency in the U.S., cannot match the complexity of the launch infrastructure in Texas. In April, Starbase witnessed the launch of the world's largest and most powerful rocket. Moreover, the site is currently preparing for the second Starship launch, scheduled for October. Mass prototype production and ongoing tests are continuously conducted in preparation for this upcoming launch. In fact, Elon Musk's ambitions go beyond Starbase. With the desire to make Starship a common mode of transportation around the world, Elon intends to establish a launch network more extensive than we might think. The first location he's aiming for is the launch facility in Florida. In late 2021, SpaceX finally began constructing the second iteration of Starship's first Florida pad. Orbital Launch Site 2 is still co-located at Kennedy Space Center's LC-39A pad, which SpaceX leases from NASA. Because of NASA's trepidation at the thought of a Starship failure and definitely delaying SpaceX from completing its Crew Dragon or Falcon Heavy contracts for the agency, the company deprioritized Starship's Florida pad, slowing progress. SpaceX has, nonetheless, made significant progress. In 13 months, SpaceX has created foundations, modified one of Pad 39A's giant spherical tanks to store cryogenic methane, installed miles of plumbing, built and assembled a second skyscraper-sized Starship launch tower, installed the legs of the Pad's orbital launch mount, or OLM, installed a water deluge system at the base of the OLM, assembled most of the OLM's donut-like mount offsite, constructed a new supersized storage tank, and delivered a forest of smaller storage tanks. SpaceX has also completed the fabrication of a massive pair of steel arms, transported them to Pad 39A, attached them to a wheeled vehicle, and installed the structure on the Starship launch tower in Florida. SpaceX employees have affectionately dubbed these arms chopsticks, and they are an essential part of what CEO Elon Musk refers to as Mechazilla. Mechazilla refers to the combined launch tower and arms that SpaceX is designed to catch, lift, stack, and fuel both stages of the Starship. Once completed, the tower's arms in Florida will be capable of precisely catching, handling, stacking, and unstacking Starship and Super Heavy spacecraft, even in relatively windy conditions. To be honest, building the Starship launch tower is an engineering feat of great magnitude, far from being easy. Many engineers even consider this ground structure to be more challenging than the production of the Starship spacecraft itself. However, SpaceX has not only one launch tower in Texas, but has also constructed an additional launch tower in Florida during the initial rocket dusting phase. Furthermore, in Florida, SpaceX has set numerous records that specifically make any rocket company or space organization, even NASA, have to take notice. The Falcon 9 is truly a workhorse in Florida. To gain a deeper understanding, Let's first talk about Falcon 9's latest record. Currently, Falcon 9's completed 66 launches, but only after the 62nd launch that Falcon 9 achieve a remarkable feat, breaking the record for 61 Falcon flights in a single year. This record was set at the end of 2022, eclipsing the previous record right at the launch site in Florida. This is indeed equivalent to a launch every 3.9 days, a substantial uptick on 2022's average flight every 5.9 days. To illustrate that rapid pace, SpaceX hit its 10th launch of 2023 by February 12th, its 20th by late March, its 30th in the second week of May, its 40th in mid-June, and its 50th and 60th at the tail ends of July and August. Setting that against last year, it took the fleet until the second week of March 2022 to hit 10 flights, mid-May to reach 20, mid-July to achieve 30, early September to get to 40, and the beginning of November to pass 50. 
With 2022's total of 61 launches achieved by New Year's Eve, a quick back-of-the-envelope calculation makes it not unreasonable to expect more than 90 missions before the curtain falls on 2023. Nearly 60% of SpaceX's missions this year involved deploying Starlink Internet satellites into orbit. Since the beginning of the year, SpaceX has launched three crewed missions to the ISS, along with three Falcon Heavy rockets. It's almost needless to say that the primary factor driving SpaceX's increasing launch cadence is the company's ability to reuse rocket boosters and first-stage components. In July, SpaceX launched its Falcon 9 booster for the 16th time as engineers extended the first stage's lifespan from 15 flights to 20 missions. According to SpaceX, this extended utility is currently reserved for Starlink launches. Furthermore, SpaceX's launch teams have been optimizing their launch sites for faster turnaround times. The turnaround time at SpaceX's busiest launch site in Florida has been reduced to less than four days between missions this year. This is crucial because SpaceX's other launch facility in Florida has been constrained by Falcon Heavy missions and crewed launches, which typically require more preparation time for each flight. In California, SpaceX's West Coast launch site has hosted 18 Falcon 9 missions. The Falcon 9 launch site in California has an older design, taking more time to set up for each mission primarily due to its robust back structure, resembling a vertical gantry structure alongside the rocket during the final countdown. Unlike their Florida counterparts, the robust backs in California do not retract from the rocket during liftoff. This means that the sturdy back structure has to endure a fiery plume of exhaust as the Falcon 9 ascends, leading to more refurbishment requirements between launches. Despite this challenge, SpaceX's ground team in California has still managed to execute Falcon 9 missions with turnaround times as short as 10 days. Out of 44 other SpaceX launches this year, all have taken off from Florida. The spaceport there has already supported 46 orbital launches this year, involving SpaceX, ULA, and Relativity Space. This has surpassed the 57 launches it hosted last year. Officials from U.S. Space Force's Space Launch Delta East, the agency overseeing launch operations from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station and Kennedy Space Center, have efficiently coordinated their activities to meet the increasing demand for launches, mainly driven by SpaceX. In the remaining quarter of the year, SpaceX already has a packed schedule of pre-scheduled launches, not to mention their own Starlink launches. To reach 100 launches in 2023, this will be a busy period. There are two scheduled Falcon Heavy rocket launches slated for this year. The first one, set for October 5th, involves the launch of NASA's Psyche asteroid probe from Florida. Later in the year, another Falcon Heavy launch is planned for a mission with the U.S. Space Force. In November, SpaceX has intentions to conduct a Falcon 9 rocket launch that will carry a commercial lunar lander developed by Intuitive Machines, a Houston-based company with aspirations of achieving the first privately owned spacecraft landing on the moon. Moreover, there are two resupply missions to the ISS in the pipeline, both utilizing Falcon 9 rockets. One mission will employ SpaceX's Dragon cargo capsule, while the other will transport a Northrop Grumman supply ship into orbit. It's noteworthy that this marks the initiation of at least three Northrop Grumman resupply missions utilizing SpaceX rockets after the retirement of their Antares launcher. Lastly, the Missile Defense Agency has plans to launch the hypersonic and ballistic tracking space sensor mission into orbit later this year using a Falcon 9 rocket. This innovative sensor is equipped with improved sensitivity specifically designed for the detection and tracking of hypersonic missiles. These missiles pose unique challenges due to their lower heat signatures compared to larger long-range ballistic missiles, making them more elusive for existing missile tracking satellites. Starbase will not be the exclusive place to launch Starships forever. Well, in reality, SpaceX has been wanting to launch Starship from its smaller rocket launch facility in Florida for a while. However, the launch site owner, NASA, has restricted this, fearing that Starship would cause trouble with Crew Dragon launches, on which they rely solely to reach the ISS. To prove that NASA's worries are redundant, SpaceX promptly provided an alternative solution for Crew Dragon by constructing a brand new launch pad for it. If you're new to exploring the Starship program, it's crucial to understand that Starbase is not initially intended as the launch site for SpaceX's Starship. Instead, it primarily functions as a facility for the production and testing of advanced Starship technologies. To be honest, Elon Musk, the head of SpaceX, always has the ultimate goal of launching Starship missions from Launch Complex 39A, LC-39A in Florida, 
possibly from a new pad that is yet to be established. In 2022, significant progress has been made towards this objective, notably with the nearly completed Starship launch tower next to the Falcon 9 mount at LC-39A. Following concerns arising from the mishap during the first Starship flight, most Starship operations at Florida's facility have been temporarily halted. Why is that? Currently, LC-39A stands as the sole U.S. site with the capability to launch crewed Dragon capsules. This is the only spacecraft currently available to transport astronauts to the ISS. That makes the launch pad a national asset rather than solely for experimental flights. If a starship were to experience an incident at LC-39A, NASA could lose its only access point to the International Space Station. When a Falcon 9 rocket exploded at LC-40 back in 2016, causing extensive damage that required a complete rebuild, SpaceX took 15 months to revive the launch pad. In other words, if a Starship launch fails and destroys the Falcon and Dragon facilities at Pad 39A at some point, within 12 to 18 months. In fact, another spacecraft that NASA chose to replace Dragon, Boeing Starliner, is many years behind schedule and is still not qualified to launch humans. Therefore, they have no hope of taking over the supply duties for the ISS. Given this high-stakes scenario, it becomes imperative to conduct rigorous testing and explore alternative launch options for crewed flights before Starship can be cleared for launches from Florida. That's why SpaceX is actively addressing this concern and working on viable alternatives. To the southwest of Space Launch Complex 40 is SpaceX's Roberts Road facility, housing SpaceX's Falcon 9 refurbishment facility Hangar X and the Cape Canaveral Star Factory. An access tower is rising for SpaceX crew and cargo Dragon missions. The third section of the structure is now in place. Once the tower is complete, it'll relieve a bottleneck at Pad 39A, which is currently the only pad equipped for Dragon launches. With numerous cranes and elevators surrounding these sections, the elevator shaft and stairs can be seen in the smaller sections at the back, and with the larger front section expected to house the crew access elevator. On launch day, the crew typically arrives at the launch pad and rides a special elevator, known as the crew access arm, to board the spacecraft, whether it's a Dragon spacecraft or another type of spacecraft. The crew access arm is a retractable walkway that extends from the launch tower to the spacecraft, allowing the crew to safely board the vehicle. The construction of an additional tower for Crew Dragon emphasizes SpaceX's dedication to establishing a strong and secure pathway for crewed missions, thereby minimizing risks to critical ISS access points. This also implies, as the crew elevator nears completion, SpaceX is likely to have a tendency to launch Starship in the near future. NASA will no longer have concerns about potential issues related to a giant new experimental rocket. Starship could potentially halt all SpaceX Dragon launches in one fell swoop, was apparently one bridge too many for the agency. From all these developments, we can anticipate the revival of activities related to Starship at the Florida site in the near future. Furthermore, another sign indicates significant progress as SpaceX is gradually expanding its operational area. A recently published environmental assessment draft for the expansion of Roberts Road, most notably in the 231-page document, is the primary proposal aiming for a northward expansion of the current facility requiring the acquisition of 100 additional acres of land from SpaceX. SpaceX has proposed a massive expansion plan for its current facility, which would triple its size to nearly 150 acres, an enormous area. The expansion plan outlines the construction of two buildings, a smaller structure likely designated for office space and a considerably larger one, potentially serving as a second star factory. The proposed expansion is designed for swift completion, possibly within two to three years. To facilitate this expansion, most utility services, electrical, fiber, and water connections could be extended from the existing Roberts Road facility. The proposal also includes a request to widen the Saturn Causeway, the road connecting the iconic vehicle assembly building with pad LC-39A. Currently, this road is 8 meters wide, which, though spacious, poses a challenge for maneuvering starships as they're 9 meters wide. SpaceX aims to expand the road to 10.3 meters, providing some wiggle room for the SPM transporters. In the event that the primary expansion site's not approved, an alternative southern expansion option is on the table, the backup plan. This would require 115 acres of land and bring the facility close to transmission lines, heightening concerns given the towering height of a starship. 
50 meters for the Starship's second stage. The drawback of this site lies in the need for new transformers and laying out tens of thousands of gas lines to compensate for the lack of existing utilities, resulting in additional work and time. The expansion will also result in the impact of up to 68.2 acres of wetlands and surface waters. Although these impacts are considered moderate, they only represent a small percentage of wetlands at the Kennedy Space Center and Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. The study also states that the project will have a negligible impact on the Florida scrub jay, a threatened species. The loss of scrub jay habitat will be offset by creating other scrub habitats. Importantly, from an environmental standpoint, the document doesn't raise any significant concerns, which is a positive aspect. So, when will Starship take off from Florida? In our prediction, SpaceX could potentially launch Starship by the end of 2024, or possibly even sooner. What are your thoughts? Share your opinions in the comments section down below. Alongside the good news of SpaceX expanding its footprint in Florida, they also have plans to build a Starship production facility along with their Hangar X. Regardless, the important thing is that Florida has been chosen as the primary launch site for Starship in the future. Therefore, significant developments in this location are undoubtedly essential, whether they happen sooner or later. Elon Musk also confirmed this during a gathering at Starbase. In response to a reporter's question about SpaceX's plans to establish a new launch site at the Kennedy Space Center, Musk said, The future role of Starbase, I think it's well suited to be our advanced R&D location. So, it's like where we will try out our designs and new versions of the rocket, and I think probably Kennedy will be our sort of main operational launch site. Not only that, but the Boca Chica location also presents SpaceX with overlapping challenges. Not everyone is thrilled to have the region be relegated as the preferred location of fiery crashes. Therefore, environmental issues around Starbase are always a concern that government agencies target. This leads to lawsuits from environmental agencies, and the process of obtaining launch permits at this facility is also cumbersome and complex, causing delays in launches that could impact important space missions. The development of SpaceX in Florida is steadily progressing. This is an exciting time as we observe their activities unfolding in the future. SpaceX is proposing to lease an additional 100 acres of land at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, or KSC. That is insane. With a robust development of the Falcon rocket in the past two years and the promising future of Starship not far behind, this proposal is a pivotal move for SpaceX to stride even further into space. So, what exactly is SpaceX doing in Florida that's shocking the entire space industry? Starship is the giant jewel of the space industry, and undoubtedly, in the future, it'll be heavily utilized and launched many times at Starbase. However, at the current moment, Falcon rocket launches continue to dominate the launch market, and Florida still sits regally on the Golden Throne. With an average of three and a half launches per day, SpaceX has launched Falcon rockets 75 times from the start of the year until now. In a bold statement, SpaceX proudly boasts of its productivity, stating that in 2023 alone, Falcon 9 has propelled over 900 tons of cargo into orbit. Not only that, but SpaceX has set a goal to launch 144 times next year, leading to an average launch frequency of only 2.3 launches each day. This is truly remarkable for a goal that no other company has achieved, if not to say they deemed it impossible. Well, to cheer on and foster even grander ambitions for the future, the future of Falcon rockets and even the future of Starship, both will evolve together and emerge as dominant players in the industry. SpaceX is currently gearing up for its most extensive expansion in Florida. They proposed a massive 100-acre expansion at the Kennedy Space Center, aptly named the Roberts Rhodes Campus, to broaden their operational scope. In particular, the maritime segment incorporates a site map specifying that the aggregate era of the new facility shouldn't surpass 1.5 million square feet, with the facility height limit set at around 400 feet. Of course, the buildings of SpaceX mustn't be taller than NASA's renowned Vehicle Assembly Building, which stands at an impressive height of 526 feet. So where exactly is the Roberts Rhodes Campus? The Roberts Rhodes Campus, approved by Kennedy Space Center in 2018, currently spans 67 acres and serves as a pivotal hub for SpaceX's operations. While not frequently showcased to the public, this site has played a crucial role in various space endeavors. Notably, one of its prominent facilities, known as Hangar X, serves as the epicenter for refurbishing Falcon boosters destined for future flights. 
The significance of Hangar X extends beyond SpaceX's internal operations, as NASA and SpaceX occasionally open their door to astronauts, granting them a first-hand view of the very rockets propelling them towards the ISS. And with this new proposal, both NASA and SpaceX stand to benefit strategically from the expansion. SpaceX will bolster its operations in Brevard County by constructing additional infrastructure. They plan to expand office space and industrial facilities and upgrade their amenities. The construction is estimated to take two to three years, and the location will be put into immediate use upon completion. Essentially, SpaceX envisions the consolidation of diverse operations, from the Falcon programs to the innovative Starship endeavors, into a unified and centralized campus for easier oversight, streamlined operation, and increased efficiency. This strategic move aims to enhance operational efficiency and streamline various facets of SpaceX's initiatives. As for NASA, it aims to fulfill its mandate to encourage the fullest commercial use of space and to foster a commercial space launch industry, aligning with national directives such as the Commercial Space Launch Act and national space policy. That's why this expansion agreement also helps them add another tick to their leaderboard, contributing to the boost of the state's economy. Additionally, SpaceX also proposes to widen Saturn Causeway from the Vehicle Assembly Building to Phillips Parkway, approximately 3.9 miles, to support launch vehicle transport. Saturn Causeway would be widened approximately 8 feet from approximately 26 feet to approximately 34, and drainage swales would be improved. Construction would also occur within the maintained area along the southern side of the road. The scale of their growth is tremendous. We can't fathom how much further SpaceX can develop in the future. It seems like they remain the only players without limits in the space industry. However, there are still issues that need to be addressed, and that's the environmental concern. Regardless of who you are and what you do, everyone has to comply with government environmental regulations. The environmental assessment process undertaken by SpaceX for its proposed expansion at the Kennedy Space Center was guided by the principles of the National Environmental Policy Act, NEPA, of 1969. NEPA, a cornerstone of environmental protection legislation, mandates a thorough examination of the potential environmental impacts of proposed projects, ensuring a comprehensive understanding of the consequences before any significant actions are taken. At the heart of SpaceX's commitment to environmental responsibility is a detailed 40-page supplemental environmental assessment. This document delves deep into the intricacies of the proposed expansion and its potential impacts on the surrounding environment. SpaceX, in collaboration with regulatory bodies, is committed to minimizing any adverse effects on the environment. It serves as a roadmap for evaluating the project's environmental footprint, identifying both direct and indirect impacts that may arise from the expansion. In essence, the proposed expansion details reflect SpaceX's commitment to a balanced and sustainable vision. By setting limitations on size, enhancing transportation infrastructure, and considering the project's full scope, SpaceX aims to not only expand its operational capabilities, but to do so in a manner that respects and enhances the unique ecosystem of the Kennedy Space Center. Don Dankert, an environmental science within Kennedy's Environmental Management Branch, said they're working to develop an environmental assessment for the proposal of SpaceX. Dankert said that the assessment should be available for public review, probably within the next couple of months. It follows a period of public scoping that involves getting feedback from the public on the initial proposal. They'll see a full and detailed analysis of the proposal, which is to expand Roberts Road Campus, he said. There's a proposed 100-acre parcel, an evaluation of the various alternatives we looked at, and a detailed analysis of all the potential environmental effects of moving forward with that proposal. As the public commenting period for SpaceX's proposed expansion at the Kennedy Space Center drew to a close October 16th, the evaluation process entered a pivotal phase marked by careful consideration and analysis. SpaceX, in collaboration with regulatory bodies, now turns its attention to the valuable feedback received during the public commentary period. Each comment becomes a piece of the puzzle, contributing to a comprehensive understanding of the potential impacts and concerns raised by stakeholders. The next crucial step involves a meticulous evaluation of these comments to determine their substance and significance in shaping the final environmental assessment. This thorough scrutiny ensures that all perspectives, whether from federal agencies or the public, are considered. SpaceX is committed to an inclusive and transparent decision-making process, acknowledging that the collective insights garnered from this evaluation phase will play a pivotal role in refining and optimizing the proposed expansion plan. Following the evaluation of comments, the final environmental assessment will be crafted accompanied by the formulation of the draft finding of no significant impact, or FONSI.
This pivotal document represents a synthesis of the environmental analysis, potential mitigation measures, and the cumulative impact of the proposed expansion. While there's no rigid timeline for the remaining steps in this process, the Kennedy Space Center assures stakeholders and the public that updates will be diligently provided. In parallel with the expansion of SpaceX's operational scope at KSC, SpaceX is also making other moves to accommodate its powerful new Super Heavy rocket. In 2019, SpaceX received the Environmental Impact Statement from NASA's Kennedy Space Center to commence the construction of the Starship Launch Tower at Launch Pad 39A. Eagle-eyed launch watchers could see much of the vertical work happening over the course of 2022 in the background of dozens of Falcon 9 launches and one Falcon Heavy launch. Currently, in coordination with NASA, the company in the midst of building a second crew access tower at Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station to mirror its capabilities at Launch Complex 39A. The redundancy would give NASA a second Florida base pad to send crew and cargo to the ISS. Currently, crew-only launches from Launch Complex 39A and cargo missions, formerly commercial resupply service missions, are launched by SpaceX in Florida and Northrop Grumman from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. And that's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.